Hey there, fellow dog lovers. So in case you missed it, there's a mysterious respiratory illness spreading in the dog world. This mysterious infection has vets baffled, and in a second, I'm gonna tell you what you can do right now if you think your dog or a dog you know might be infected. But before we do that, here are some symptoms that you should look out for. So is this your dog or a dog you know? Maybe a friend or a family member's dog is acting a little off? This can obviously be disheartening and concerning, so here are some symptoms to look out for. Coughing, persistent, dry, or wet coughing that just won't quit. Eye or nose discharge, watery or thick discharge that's unusual and maybe a little icky. Sneezing, frequent sneezing that's more than just a cute quirk. Lethargy, unusual tiredness or a lack of energy that's just not like your pup. If your dog exhibits more severe symptoms like loss of appetite or difficulty breathing or extreme lethargy, you should seek immediate veterinary care. Acting quickly can improve your dog's prognosis and help prevent the illness from spreading to other furry friends. So before we dive more into the background about the disease and preventative measures, here are some things you can do right now if you think your dog might have the virus. First, contact your vet. Don't wait. Get professional advice immediately. Your vet is always your best friend in situations like this. Isolate your dog. Keep your dog away from other canine companions just to prevent the spread temporarily. It's like a doggy quarantine. Maintain hygiene. Wash your hands after handling your dog and disinfect their living area. Cleanliness is key. Monitor symptoms. Keep a close eye on your dog's health and note any changes. You know your pup the best. Armed with these quick action steps and the info we're about to share, you can prevent your dog from getting sick and help stop the spread of this pesky virus. Now, hopefully all the dear dogs in your life are healthy and happy, but armed with those fast action steps and the info we're about to share, we can prevent our dogs from getting sick and help prevent the spread of this virus. So let's talk about the illness itself. Where did it come from and what does the vet community and, and scientists know about it so far? This respiratory illness, often compared to kennel cough, has been reported in dogs across multiple states, causing severe respiratory issues and in some cases pneumonia and even death. Researchers are still trying to identify the exact cause and they suspect it might be a new pathogen or an evolved form of a known virus or bacterium. The culprit seems to spread primarily through respiratory droplets, making close contact with infected dogs a significant risk factor. To avoid transmission, dog owners should minimize their pet's exposure to places like dog parks, boarding kennels, grooming stations, and dog shows. Essentially, it's like social distancing for dogs. By understanding these transmission methods and staying vigilant, we can better protect our furry friends from this mysterious illness. Okay, so now that we know more about the virus and the steps to take if you think your dog might be infected, let's talk about preventative measures to keep your pups healthy and happy. We get it, your dog lives to play with her BFFs, but try to limit their interaction with other dogs just for now. Sorry, Sadie, but time for a temporary pause on the playdates. Steer clear of places where dogs congregate, like dog parks and kennels. It's not forever, just until we get the virus under control. Ensure your dog is vaccinated, especially for respiratory illnesses like Bordetella and canine influenza. It's like giving your dog a superhero shield against these germs. Proper hygiene is, again, essential. Regularly wash your hands and disinfect your dog's living areas to prevent the spread of germs. A clean home is a healthy home. Find creative ways to keep your dog active and entertained at home, such as using puzzle toys or playing fetch in the backyard. Who said staying in can't be fun? Now, you're probably wondering where all this is heading, right? So, thanks to the COVID-19 pandemic, we're all too familiar with feelings of uncertainty regarding health and safety. So, the last thing any of us wants for our furry friends is to suffer the same fate. But what does the future hold? Veterinary researchers are on a mission to solve the mystery, but it's difficult to pin down because of the complexity of respiratory diseases in dogs. Institutions like Colorado State University and the University of New Hampshire are conducting next-generation sequencing to identify potential new pathogens. These efforts aim to develop better diagnostic tools and treatments, offering hope for quicker and more accurate identification of the illness. 
While the research continues, it's crucial for us pet owners to stay informed and to follow our vet's advice. The more we know, the better we can protect our dogs. Sadly, just like COVID-19 had a serious impact on businesses of all kinds, this virus is taking its toll on vets, doggy daycares, groomers, and other dog businesses. Veterinary clinics are overwhelmed with cases, so they're implementing strict hygiene protocols to prevent the spread of the disease. Dog boarding facilities and daycares have seen a decline in business as owners avoid high-risk environments. Some facilities have had to close temporarily due to reduced bookings and the increased cost of safety measures. Veterinarians recommend continuing to take preventative measures seriously, keeping dogs up to date on vaccinations and avoiding close contact with unfamiliar dogs. For businesses, maintaining high standards and clear communication can help reassure clients about safety. Working together in this way is a crucial step in keeping our furry friends healthy. Now, real quick, before we go, we want to tell you about a couple of dogs and how they were affected so you know what to do and understand the importance of acting, especially if you think a doggo in your life might be infected. Sadly, our first story is a cautionary tale. Meet Hunter, a beloved search and rescue dog. He started showing symptoms like persistent coughing and lethargy. Despite receiving the best care, his condition worsened and it led to a heartbreaking loss for his owner. It's a reminder of how serious this illness can be. But then, on the bright side, there's the beautiful story of Max the Lab. He developed severe respiratory symptoms after a visit to a local dog park. His owner erred on the safe side and acted swiftly to seek care. Thanks to the early intervention and rigorous treatment, Max made a full recovery. Remember, we can never be too careful when it comes to seeking prompt veterinary attention at the first sign of symptoms. So, while we always want to hope for the best, it's of vital importance that we prepare for the not-so-best. Let's be smart and safe, and if you think something's wrong with your pup or something going around your local dog run, daycare, or other doggy destination, do something. Because our canine companions can't do it for themselves. In the meantime, stay informed, follow preventative measures, and don't hesitate to reach out to your vet if you have any concerns. Together, we can navigate this challenge and keep our beloved pets safe and healthy. And please, share this video with your dog park fam so we can stop this before it becomes a pup pandemic. Thank you for watching, and real quick, please support the channel so we can build a community of dog fans to better support our dog fans. Like, subscribe, and share this video with your fellow dog lovers. Leave a comment below with your own experiences or any helpful tips you might have. Stay safe and give your pup an extra treat from us.